In March, the 5th Oakham International was held at Oakham School, Rutland. This event was almost certainly the strongest junior tournament of all time, with six grandmasters participating, including the two superstars, Alexei Shioff of Latvia and Michael Adams of England. Before the start of round one, some amusement was caused by the ex-Soviet players in deciding which flags they were going to have. The hammer and sickles were there for anyone to take, but no one seemed to want to play under them. One of the most amusing aspects was when Vladimir Kopian, the world junior champion for Armenia, was asked whether his Armenian flag was correct. His reply stunned us a little. He said, well I wouldn't know, all I know is that it's got three colours in it. Anyway, Vladimir Kopian did know what he was doing in this next game, which was taken from round three. The game starts quietly enough. White opens c4, black replies e5. g3, knight f6, bishop g2, knight c6, knight c3, g6, e3, bishop g7, knight g2, black castles, and white castles, d6, d4, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, bishop comes out to f5 which is a, a nice square, so it's hard to kick the bishop away, h3, h5, b3, rook e8, d5, knight b4, a3. So it's all been fairly quiet so far, but now the black knight which is attacked, instead of retreating to a6, comes into white's position, knight d3. Bishop g5, Queen d7, Bishop takes f6, Bishop takes f6, g4, h takes g4, h takes g4, no the black bishop cannot take the pawn on g4 because of queen takes knight, so Rakopian has to throw his knight further into the white position, knight b2. Queen d2, bishop d3. No, if the white queen takes knight on b2, black regains the piece with bishop takes e2. Neither the knight or the queen can recapture. Bishop f3, queen e7. White still can't capture the knight on b2 in view of the same threat. Bishop takes e2, winning back the piece. White plays rook a2, bishop e5. And now the black queen is threatening to come in on h4. White attempts to shut it out with g5. Now another very nice move, queen d7. White tries to give his king some breathing space, rook c1, and the black queen drops in on h3. White desperately tries to bring pieces around his king, knight g3. And now another fine move by black, bishop d4. Note that queen takes g3 is now threatened. Rook takes b2, queen takes g3, bishop g2, rook e2, knight takes e2, b3, 
bishop takes f2 check. And in this position, white resigned. And it's easy to see why. After the natural, king f1, then black has the crushing bishop e3. The queen must go to e1 to defend against the mate on f2. But now queen f4 check wins everything because white cannot stop the inevitable mate on f2. Sure off shot to a 4-4 start. But in round 5 against Sergei Tibyakov, he didn't seem to be doing that well. In the following position, Tibyakov must have been happy with the white pieces. Sheer off, black to move, looks rather in trouble with that rook stuck on a7. That is before the thunderbolt. I don't think Tibyakov could believe Shiroff's next move. Bishop takes g2. Tibyakov has to recapture. Bishop takes g2. If knight takes g2, of course, simply knight h3, forks the queen and the king. And now the rook on a7 suddenly has a purpose in life. It shoots over to g7. And Tibyakov's question that he was struggling to, to answer is, what can he do now? One idea, perhaps, is to play queen takes e5. But after knight h3, king h1, knight takes f2, you can see that white's losing a few pieces, at least he's rook on d1. So where does the queen go? In the end, Tibikov decided that he had nothing better than to swap the rook off on g7. So he played queen takes g7. So not a bad investment uh, on Shiro's part for his rook that was stuck on a7. After king takes queen, Shiro had a little difficulty wrapping up this position, thereby giving himself 5 out of 5, a point clear of the field, and everyone's starting to say, this must be Shiro's tournament. But Shirov lost to Kramnik in round 6, which left the tournament wide open again. Unfortunately for England, Michael Adams was having one of his worst ever tournaments, so no challenge was going to come from that quarter. Any challenge had to come from the ex-Soviets. Shirov playing white has been trying to win this position for some time, but experts were all expecting it just to be a draw. Objectively, it probably should be a draw, but it's much more difficult than we realised. Black should now play king e6, after which he does have good drawing chances, but Akolpian thought that he could simply play a forced draw. Bishop takes f3. White recaptures. And now h2. Now, if the knight goes back to cover the h1 square, say knight g3, then the black king goes to d4, and then pawns will be mopped up, and obviously just king and knight cannot make the black king. But now Shiro's brilliant idea starts to be set in motion. King g2. Black must, of course, capture the knight. Both players have obviously analysed this. c5. At first sight, it looks like b takes c5 will be very good for black. But let's just look what would happen. a5, king d5. Now, after b6, a takes b6, a6, king c6, a7, king b7, and of course, the black king is in time. This was obviously the position which Ecolpian had looked at and come to the conclusion it was a draw. But here, Shiroff has the most incredible move. a6. And black is completely lost. b6 will be threatened and there's nothing black can do about it. If c4 or king d6, then simply b6 if king c6, then b takes a7. And note that the a6 pawn stops the king coming back to that critical b7 square, which allows white to queen. The pawns are brilliantly placed as well. The b5 pawn stops the king coming to c6, 
and Black's own pawn on c5 prevents him drawing. Absolutely amazing endgame. So after c5, Black has no option but to drop his king back, king d5, but now c6, king d6, king takes h2, king c7, king g3, king d6, king f4, king e6, king e4, and as everybody will know, this is a very simple win for white. So a coping decided there's no use trying to hold this position against one of the best players in the world and dutifully resigned, which practically gave she off the tournament. Preparing for a chess game these days is a very, very serious affair. With all these chess books, magazines, computer databases, one slip in the opening can cost you your life. The next game which I'm going to show you really frightens me. It frightens me for the future of chess. But anyway, I won't spoil it. Just see what you think. e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop b5 a6 bishop a4 knight f6 castles b5 bishop b3 this opening is known as the Archangel for black, and it often leads to very sharp, interesting positions. Bishop b7, c3, knight takes e4, d4, knight a5, knight takes e5, Knight takes b3, Queen takes b3, Queen f6. Knight d6 would have been a much safer way of playing for black. This move allows white to get a really dangerous attack. f3, Knight c5, Knight g4, Knight takes b3, Knight takes f6, check. If black simply recaptures the knight on f6, white will play a takes b3, and as you can see, black's pawn structure doesn't look good. But this would have been infinitely preferable to what happened. King e7. Bishop g5, knight takes the rook, rook e1 check, now the king hunt commences, king d6, bishop f4 check. The good thing about this position for black, if there is any one good thing, is that he doesn't need to think about his moves too much. King c6, all forced. d5, now he has a choice. If king b6, then knight takes d7 check. King a7, and bishop e3 will lead to checkmate. Alternatively, king a5, bishop takes c7 check. Again, black doesn't need to waste time thinking. King a4, and now a nice little manoeuvre. Knight b6 check. King a5, knight c4 discovered check. King a4, b3, the knight must take on b3, and then knight b2 checkmate. So, Collinson puts his king on c5. b4 check, 
forcing the king further into enemy territory. King c4, knight a3, no, the black king goes to d3, it eventually gets checkmated. So black tried to take on c3, but no, knight e4 check. King grabbed yet another pawn. King takes b4. Rook b1 check. The king grabbed yet another piece. King takes a3. So if you have a quick material count, you see that black is now a rook piece and pawn up. But after knight c3, black resigned. The point is, bishop c1, giving checkmate cannot be stopped. Black can waste moves, he can play bishop c5 check, the king goes to f1, and he's still no nearer to solving the problem of bishop c1. This game looks like a fantastic brilliancy, one of those old romantic games played in the last century. In fact, a spectator was so impressed, he rushed up to the young Swedish player and congratulated him. The Swede replied somewhat bluntly. He said, why congratulate me? All I did was read New in Chess magazine. What did he mean, I thought? So I went to look up the reference. I found this position on page three of the magazine. It had all been seen and analyzed before. Every single move right up to knight c3. Now this is on move 22. If chess is gonna be analyzed so deeply, then you see what I mean why making a slight error in an opening can cost you your life. The poor English player had no idea about any of this. Didn't feel that he'd done anything wrong, but had just walked into a 22 move deep opening trap. It really is frightening. Alexis Shirov was the winner of Oakham by a clear point. No surprise, he seems to win everything these days. In 1991, he had an absolutely brilliant year. 1992 could be even better. In fact, on the next list, I think it will even be number three in the world, ahead of such stars as Short and Ivanchuk. Hi, this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.